Welcome back, Diecast Emporium fans. In today's video, we're going to be doing a comparison on the Norscott Caterpillar D8R Series 2 track type tractor versus the updated Diecast Masters Cat D8R Series 2 track type tractor. So when this was first released by Norscott way back in 2002, uh, it wasn't a very big seller, which is why they tried to move so much stock of it by adding it to the Kenworth low boy sets and the Peterbilt low boy sets and pretty much anything else they could get away with. And one of the reasons why it wasn't a main seller or a big, huge seller was its lack of functionality and rubber tracks. So we will first take a brief look at the original. Again, rubber tracks um, that really did not roll well whatsoever. Um, obviously, they're not going to roll here on the review table, but even on a uh, surface with friction, they didn't roll very well. Looking at the back, the ripper did go down to about there, which was good because a lot of people like to pose their machines off the ground, especially when you're talking bulldozers. The blade, however, had very, very, very limited um, movement and functionality. As you can see here, I'm applying a ton of pressure to get the blade to move up, and it just simply won't go. On the front, you had your Caterpillar logo two lights, your air cleaner, your exhaust, plastic hand and grab rails all around this machine. Um, and it's very difficult to see. But right underneath the D8R, I'm not sure if my camera will pick it up, but in the red line, you can see Series 2 under the D8R. So if this model had anything going for it, it actually did have some, um, some, de some decent uh, decals applied for the time period that this was released. Moving on to the brand new updated Diecast Masters D8R. And interesting to see that now we have the opposite problem when it comes to the ripper mechanism. At least on my review model, it doesn't want to go up. As you can see, again, the amount of pressure. And if I stop talking, you can hear that sound of metal just wanting to break. So I'm not going to force it. However, it will go down, it just only comes up to there. As far as the blade goes, surprisingly, not a whole bunch of improvement there. Again, you can hear the metal almost flexing as it struggles to get the blade off the ground. Got your black grill in front, your lines here in black, which look nice. But the detail has improved. So while for the most part the functionality has more or less stayed the same, you can see the colored in uh, engine housing perforations, which aren't perforated, but they look a heck of a whole lot better with some black paint on it versus having nothing on it, as you can see here to the right. Another huge improvement is the metal tracks, which do roll a lot better on a friction surface, and you can see they are tensioned. So if you ever wanted to take the tracks off, you could do that as well. As with all Diecast Masters models mandated by Caterpillar themselves, this one comes with the operator inside the cab. And unless you want to do some serious renovation, uh, most of the operators and most of the Diecast Masters model, let's just say, are a pain in the butt to get out. As far as my opinion on that whole thing goes, I think the jury's still out. Uh, the jury, excuse me, is still out on that. Um, I mean, I could go really here nor there with it. I think it's cool because it does give a, uh, if you're doing a scene or if you're using the model, um, posed as it's working, I think it looks a lot better to actually have somebody in the cab. But if you look close enough on it, I mean, it almost looks like a toy, like a little toy guy behind the wheel. So like I said, I can go either here nor there on it. But again, that's not a decision made by me or anybody else. That was a decision made by Caterpillar and their promotional staff. So anyway, without rambling too much, the D8R by Diecast Masters is substantially better than the original. Um, however, there are a lot better dozers out there on the market. In fact, there's even the newer D8T uh, by Norscott, which you can pick up. And I believe... Um, I'm not mistaken again, that Diecast Masters is doing the D8T as well. So if you're looking for a D8, 
a modern D8, uh, I would go that route. If you're looking for an older D8, definitely check out uh, the NZG pieces as they're going to be substantially more expensive, but they are a nicer piece. So as always, guys, thank you for tuning into my video. I hope that this requested video answered any and all questions that the gentleman sent me over on Instagram. And on that note, right before I sign off here, if you look at the bottom of the screen, at least as of the taping of this particular video, we're at 861 subscribers here on YouTube, which is fantastic. I appreciate each and every single one of you that took the 10 seconds to do that. Not really two seconds to do that. But I am holding a contest on the Facebook and Instagram page. So once we hit 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube, where it really matters, I will be doing my first ever giveaway. So chances are, if you're watching this video, you are already subscribed. But maybe those new viewers that have maybe found the link via Facebook or whatever, uh, make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything but a moment of your time, and it definitely helps out each and every one of us here on YouTube. So once we hit 1,000 subscribers, once again, to show you guys my appreciation, I will be doing a model giveaway. But until then, guys, stay tuned as new videos are added weekly. Thank you for watching this one, and I hope you all have a great Memorial Day weekend.